Welcome everybody to another version of Seize Your Business and we're actually going to start today with a little bit of a public service announcement. Uh, both Kevin and myself are big fans of networking and uh, we've built up tremendous networks over the years. So if there's anything you need, if you have a business challenge you don't know what to do with, a business opportunity, you need a resource, you want to buy a business, you want to sell a business. We know people in all those areas, we know about all kinds of opportunities, so please don't hesitate to um, reach out and you know reach out and call us and uh, we'll help you with um, whatever we can. Um, I'm Jim Wozniak, you can call me at 630-272-3895 and Kevin? Kevin O'Flaherty of Flaherty Law and you can call me at 630-324-6666 and we're joined today by our guest Charles Hooker from Charles Home Inspection and today we're going to talk about building a referral network. So Charles, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and what you do before we dive into that? Uh, uh, Charles Hooker, uh, Charles Home Inspection. Uh, my background is probably over 20 years in contract work and inspections. Uh, actually working on the industrial side and manufacturing of safety inspections there and stepped out and opened my own business. Uh, it's Charles Home Inspection here in the side of Naperville but covering the western suburbs. Okay, and where do, you, where do your referrals come from or where does your business come from? My business comes from realtors. Realtors are my bread and butter of the business. So you're not getting people just finding you on the internet. You need a warm referral from a realtor. Warm referrals are realtors. People trust the realtors, then the realtors trust myself, and then that's where the relationship grows. So uh, how long have you been in business for? Oh, uh, just about a year and a half. Okay. Just and about a year and a half on my own. Tell us, uh, I always love talking to people with relatively new businesses to learn about the challenges they've gone through and, and the new ideas that they're, they're coming up with to build their business. Because that's when you really got to hustle and come up, oh, with, yes. uh, come up with good, fresh marketing and networking ideas. So what have you been doing to, uh, to bring business in and to, to meet realtors? Uh, the biggest part is networking up, joining the chamber, Chamber 360 with you guys where I met you. Uh, chambers are very big, meeting just tons of people. Uh, going in real estate offices, just walking in, introducing yourself, just putting your face in front of them so they don't see a card or a website. They actually see the person to where they can gain a trust and relationship. Uh, and just constantly networking, like with Jim said in the beginning, always out there meeting new people, meeting guys like yourselves, uh, which is huge opportunities. Uh, just meeting you guys. Now, now, let me ask you a question. I mean, on the surface, that sounds like a great strategy. But how do you distinguish yourself from other home inspectors? Because probably 90% of home inspectors, if not more, have kind of the same Correct. strategy. If I'm a realtor, okay, I got home inspector A, I got B, I got C, I got Charles. You know, how, how do you uh, endear yourself or distinguish That's the yourself? hardest part. That is the part that probably every home inspector struggles with because every real estate agent doesn't want a home inspector that come in as the alarmist, as they would say, mm -hmm. to go in and just, you know, really kill the deal for them. It's always, you know, because that's the hard part of being, it's a fine line we have to walk. The biggest part is, that's the main part we find is the meeting them. It's getting them to use you once. It's, it's more or less they have to see your work before they trust you. But getting them to take that first step is what's huge. Uh, once you get with one realtor that has used you and then they refer you and they've liked you, that's where you really big build your base as far as networking goes with them and they refer down the road. They have to see your work. The hard part is just convincing them that you're the guy and, and it does take probably 10 contacts with that person mm -hmm. to get that one inspection. Uh, and once you do and they like you, then you're, you're good. Uh, and that's how you refer. It's, 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 a, it's a hard process. It's, it's not easy, which I found starting my business uh, as a home inspector. Well, you know what? Let me ask you this question because you made me think of something. Uh, typically, the home inspector gets brought in by the buyer once they've got a contract yes. on a home. Yes. Right? So, <clears throat> what if you were to offer the realtors? a free basic inspection of listings that they have so they can anticipate what might come up when there is actually a sale. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that would maybe uh, make them... like. I, I actually them. work with two realtors, uh, which there's a fee involved, uh, that I am doing pre-inspections. 
pre-sale inspections. Uh, some I just do a roof in an attic where that is, like we spoke before, that is a big part of the inspections. You find leaks or, you know, mold in the attics. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a process that a majority of home inspectors are trying to market. Um, getting most, most people, the seller, to pay that fee is hard for them to understand. But once they do it, then they realize I did, they didn't have these things going in their house. That's, but that is a good idea mm -hmm. um, as far as the free part. The inspections, it's kind of hard to offer free unless it's, I've done walkthroughs for free for them just to point out small things and not give the report because it is a time consuming process to do mm -hmm. probably an average of two hours per home depending yeah. on the size okay. and then another couple hours for your report. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that, that is something to look at. I guess. Mm -hmm. So one of, I mean, one of the challenges you probably have, and I have sometimes, is that, you know, when you're walking into a, a real estate office to meet with realtors, they've already got their home inspector and you you have to give them some reason to switch, some unique selling proposition. And the challenge is that the referral is a one-way street, typically, I assume, yes. mm -hmm. because you're not yes. going to be sending – you can't say, hey, let's do business together. Let me right. send you a bunch of referrals if you send me some back. Right. So you've got to convince them just to send you referrals without any – benefit of getting a lot of referrals back. Now, I'm sure right. that if you have the opportunity, you got yes. a buddy selling your home, Yes, but, you know, it, 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 that's the way it is with me and financial advisors where, you know, I get a lot of my estate planning business from financial advisors, and when I can, I refer back to them, but it's not as easy for mm. me to refer that direction. Right. And actually, same for realtors for me. So how do you go to a realtor and convince them, hey, give me a try, you know, is it just, I'm the best, I've got the best expertise? Or how do you overcome that hurdle of not being able to say, I'll, I'll trade referrals with you? Oh, the best thing that I found, that uh, which maybe some guys do, was just to talk to them. Don't go in and tell how good I am because the old saying, if you have to tell me how good you are, you're not that good. Uh, so my approach when I meet new ones, they, and I, I ask them up front, I say, do you already have someone? And then it's out of the way and they don't have to, you know, not feel like they're hurting your feelings or disrespecting you. And they say, yes, I have someone that I use on a regular basis. And my comeback is to say, hey, that's great. You know, here's my card. Um, if, if he's ever on vacation, if he's too busy, give me a call. I'd be happy to fill in for you. You know, and I understand, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure he's a great inspector. I don't ever talk bad and say, hey, you know, and that has worked for me on several occasions where someone's been on vacation. They're like, hey, I've got this last minute inspection. Mm -hmm. And I've literally done it within, within eight hours when I've got a phone call and something's changed. And that does work. And I've actually, not, I would say I've got more business from that person. They've used me more so than the regular inspector after just because the simple approach of uh, just going in and just being their friend first relationship how are you you know if you have an opening here it is uh, i'm available for you give me a last minute call i don't i don't mm -hmm. that's no problem mm -hmm. and that that has worked very well for me uh, just you know keeping it honest don't don't put a lot out there just talk with them and just say this is what I do, you know. They they know what home inspectors do. Sure. sure. They, they know if they, sure. they know my job probably as well as I know my job. <laughs> They've seen it all. So something you said there was, you know, building a friendship and I think, you know, there's there might be some referral sources that are are stuck with their person. They've been with someone for twenty years and no matter how close you get, you know, they're probably not gonna switch. But there's others where, you know, you're not going to impress them with your expertise because, you know, they're, they probably got an expert already. Yes. But if you find a way to get them, I, I talk about this a lot, but get them into your vortex where you see them on a regular yes. basis and have an excuse to, over the course of time, yes. build a genuine friendship with somebody, right. eventually the majority of people will probably give you a shot down the right. road. Or when that time happens, when they have a problem with their existing home inspector, yes you're already, you know, there in line for them. Right. And then and that's what it is. You just constantly, uh, the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. If you're always there in front of them, making a contact at least once a month, every two, three weeks to those, and it, and it does pay off. That's that's the hard part. And, and you see, when you watch our show, you learn so much because you get to hear people use words like vortex. I mean, I can't remember the last time I used <laughs> vortex in conversation. I'm not sure you even know what it is. I hope it's something good. But, uh, so that's, we appreciate that from our, uh, our, our listeners. So do you, do you do home inspections and, and commercial properties too, or is that an entirely different animal? It's an entirely different animal. Um, I'm, I don't right now. Uh, mm -hmm. In the startup phase, I'm concentrating on the one residential. Uh, mm -hmm. I look to further down the road to step out into commercial. I want to get my base set first because a lot of realtors, some do both commercial and residential on mm -hmm. some occasions. So if I can, I'll get my good referral base and my business established, you know, as residential, and then I'll step to that next level. Yes. Now, we love 
using stories on our show. Can you tell us a, a story about a particular unusual inspection? I mean, did you ever find like a dead body or like a stash <laughs> of cash or anything? Like what's, what's uh, sort of been some of your more interesting experiences? Uh, no dead bodies. Uh, one of my most recent ones uh, we just spoke of last night, uh, crawl space, which those are always lovely. Uh, please, you know, appreciate your home inspectors on that part of the inspection. Okay. Uh, you know, small crawl space. I had to go in head first within about 10 feet, got the flashlight and sitting over in the corner is a nice little set of beady eyes looking at me. Really? So at that point, it's like, okay, it's time to step out and end up yeah. being a very large raccoon. Uh, really? So yeah, and raccoons, I would have lost that fight in the crawl space. Yeah, I'm sure. So, yeah, they have an advantage. Yes. So, so when you're, you say you kind of go, kind of do the door-to-door -door sales approach with, with realtors and you just drop by their offices. What are some of the challenges associated with that and the hurdles that you have to overcome? The biggest hurdle is there are a vast majority of home inspectors in this area. So you step into the office and right away, I've only done that a few times because I don't find it to be very beneficial because once you step in and you open as I'm a Charles, Charles home inspection, mm -hmm. You can almost see their face like, oh, there's another home inspector. Right, you know? someone and, trying to sell yeah, them. And trying try, try to sell themselves. So I, I don't take that approach. The way I approach offices is once I get to a realtor and I have that relationship and they're using me on a steady basis, um, I'll say, hey, next time in your office, let me know. So I'll, I'll come in, talk to you, and walk through. And they're like, oh, yeah. Cause, and once you build that relationship part, they're more comfortable bringing you into the office and you take in the cookies or hand lotion or whatever you to give to people to with your marketing on it, your name. Uh, that is the biggest part is enter entering the office because there are so many, there's, I believe they told that there is like one home inspector to 400 realtors. So the couple thousand home inspectors that are in this area, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. So the approach is just the relationship part first, not walking in the office. Here's my thing, and can I throw these in there because they probably have 100 business cards already. Sure. Uh, so that is the biggest part is just getting it in with one realtor to step into the office. The walking in really isn't uh, beneficial as far as I'm concerned. Well, and, you know, I think yeah, I'd like to talk about more of the, you know, first approach here, how, how you get the person at the top of the sales funnel. But before I forget, one of the things that I find really important is finding ways to add value other than giving referrals. And I, I've talked about this a lot on the show. Um, and so title companies are another to me, what I am to realtors, where I'm not going to be able to give realtors as much business. Title companies aren't going to give me a bunch of referrals, but they all want my business Correct. because we, the attorney's the one that gets to basically pick the title company. And they come, will drop by my office and want to meet with me. And, you know, sometimes they get in the door, sometimes they don't. Uh, but when they do get in the door, they the ones that have a unique selling proposition that can show me, here's how I can benefit you, other than just doing great title work are the ones that I really consider and bring to my real estate attorneys and say, hey, we should check this out. So, for example, you know, there's a title company that puts on uh, seminars and puts uh, puts attorneys in front of realtors. So they host the seminar and they have an attorney speak and put everything together and have a bunch of realtors there. So they find a way to get me in front of the people that can give me referrals. And I think that's a really important thing to have some way – to add value other than just trading referrals and doing great oh, work. Yes, it is. Um, so. the, what we do is that's one of the reasons I started the podcast in the first place was to give my referral partners or, you know, mm -hmm. Hey, be a guest on my podcast. And it became much more than that, right. but, uh, you know, networking groups that you can invite them to seminars that you put on. Are there any other ways that you're thinking about adding value? To uh, the, the referral part is, it's very hard for me on my side. I'm, I'm the last guy usually in the transaction. They already have yourself as the attorney. They have the bankers. Uh, what I try to do uh, with some of the attorneys I've met uh, on networking is talk to yourself and the uh, mortgage brokers uh, or the financial brokers. I try to introduce them to, to the realtors that I have, you know, at least introduce them to where down the road of same as mine. If they don't like their current person, they can use this different mortgage person. I try to to include that on and in the whole realm I, and but realtors are very hard because they have their set team they don't like to step out of their team sure. uh, so you mention and say I, I have a person and they have their name and if it ever comes up then they're there uh, that, that's what I try to to keep going as a networking group as far as as my real estate finding team, ways to put will. people together yeah, try to just, just connect them like hey I know a person here I mean and, and as simple as uh, 
actually of uh, insurance gentlemen, some of the people at home home insurance. I've made really good contacts with a few of those people that give me referrals to realtors, and I do the same for them. And it, it is really a good connection. It's, it's easier for the realtor to just, hey, I know a friend that has does really good home insurance or getting a home. This is something to look at. It's easier for them to bring it forward than me. So I kind of am the middleman and put people together. And, and that's that's worked in my favor. It, it has worked. And that will keep you in front of them, too. I yes. mean, it, that, that's you know, they may not give you as many value points as if you had given them a referral, yes. but it, it's not nothing, and yes. it's, it's an excuse to reach out to them, hey, right. and they know you're thinking about them, right? and that still engenders some mm -hmm. respect and desire to work Correct. with you. Correct, yeah, exactly. So what networking events, uh, you, you say you meet a lot of people through networking, what what are some good networking events, uh, types of events, what are some bad ones, what's worked for you, what has it? Uh, well, you know, a lot of the chamber events are good. You have your, your B&I groups. Uh, I have a realtor that asked me to actually join that group. A little hesitant. Uh, I did a home inspection for a gentleman that was in the group, was an insurance man, and the realtor had joined it. Um, and I was her regular inspector. And they're like, hey, come to lunch with us. You're going to like this group. Uh, and I've got in there and met tons of people through that. It's really been good for me. Uh, and just go to most of any networking event, you know, rotary meetings. I've spoken in front of a few rotaries. Just getting out there and being visible in, in every networking event. Uh, the ones that don't work are the ones where they are a real estate function because there are 100 home inspectors or 50 to 200 and everyone's trying to sell themselves and it really doesn't work because it's like walking in the office. They're like, oh, there's another home inspector walking up to us talking to us. So sure. uh, it, it's very hard to do that aspect. It's in on on a group basis. That so for people who don't know what BNI groups are, they're, they're a leads group, and a leads group is basically uh, a group of uh, professionals that are exclusive, industry exclusive, only one person per industry, and they meet you know periodically with the purpose of exchanging referrals. So maybe if the uh, you can't give the realtor in the group business, you might be able to give someone else in the yes. group business, yeah. but you can get business yeah. from the realtor and in the everyone, group. Yeah, works so together. it resolves the problem of like the one-way supply chain of referrals yes. a little bit. Exactly. So you've had a good experience with, with leads groups? I have. With that one, I have, yes. Okay. Yeah, some, some not so much. Uh, it's just uh, I think some people get in there, they're complacent, and it's... Uh, Give me leads, and they don't they don't want to return the favor. Yeah. But you have to return the favor in, in the business. You know, you know, Charles. I, I was thinking. I and I don't know if this would work, but I know there's an organization. It's actually just down the street called uh, Main, Main Street, street organization, organization of Realtors, of realtors mm -hmm. and they put on classes for realtors. Now, I don't know if you have to be a realtor to go to the classes. That may be a problem. But if you could go to some of their classes and just say, I just want to learn all I can about the real estate because I'm a home inspector. Now, you're the only inspector with a group of 15, 20 realtors. Yes, I have been to that this down the road okay. a few times. Uh, you have to be a realtor to go you to those. Do. Okay. It's your like it's yeah. like the real estate yeah. group, and you're kind of an associate member. Yeah. To where basically, there are attorneys, mortgage people, and it's basically the underlying group, and the realtors have their own. And to get into that, uh, it's very hard to have a meeting in front of them. It's pretty mm -hmm. much the group is... They have networking events for the realtors. This group built up of the attorneys, title people. They're every aspect of a home, you know, yeah. builders, contractors. Right. They're in there basically not really as a lead group, but they're a support for them. And you network for them and you put on things and pay for things for them and they attend. And then you network with them. That's that's how that works. And, and that's a good avenue, but it's also... You know, it's almost flooded with the same people yeah. that go to those. Those, those are it's they're good. You have to go to those. That's one of those things that you just have to grin and bear it and go to those sometimes as a as a single, uh, you know, entrepreneur. Are you on? Uh, are you on LinkedIn? Yes. You know, one thought would might be to send out a LinkedIn message and just ask your, um, you know, database of people on LinkedIn. Do you know any realtors you could introduce me to? Yeah, I've done that, and believe it or not, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Media has been huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have a page, but just you know, five six years ago, my children actually got me a page. Mm -hmm. But up here, realtors use that. They'll post a listing, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm friends with them. And you share the picture; they see that you shared the picture. People that I work with see they shared the picture, yeah. and they appreciate that when you simply just hitting share and you share a picture. Mm -hmm. It goes you know across the web to everyone. Facebook is is really huge. Uh, it's something I didn't think would be good for home inspection. Yeah. Uh, I've posted two things a couple times, and I just right now I have a personal page with my name on top. I'm getting ready to do a business page. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the, the dangerous things I've found, I've posted and commented, this is unsafe, this is the importance. I don't 
promote myself. I'm just like, yeah. this is very important. This is important to the home inspection. If you need a good one, give me a call. Mm -hmm. And I've had realtors call me and say, I saw your post. Did never knew that person, and apparently a couple people shared it. They saw it, and they're like, hey, I need a good home inspector, and they've used me ever since. Mm -hmm. Just something simple as that has been really huge. I found more as far as the media side, social media. Facebook has been has been a good one. Well, Charles, if someone needs a home inspector and would like to reach out to you, if there might be a realtor listening that, that uh, would Perfect. like to work with you, uh, how can they reach you? Uh, you can reach me. At, uh, my email is charles at charleshomeinspection.com. My phone number is 630-442-4873. Uh, just give me a call anytime. I'd be happy to talk to you. All right, Jim, how can people reach you? 630-272-3895. You can call me to schedule a free initial consultation at 630-324-6666. Uh, I also do a podcast about legal issues called learn-about-law.com. It's the Learn About Law podcast. And you can check out, uh, I think we're up to pushing 90 uh, podcasts and videos uh, for Seize Your Business at SeizeYourBusiness.com, and we also are uh, streaming uh, on uh, internet radio. So you can find us basically everywhere now, so please check us out. Thanks for listening. And lastly, if you would like to be on our show or you know somebody who would, we always appreciate the recommendations and um, new people to talk to. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Thank you, Gus. Thank you very much.